Hello, everyone. Um, welcome, and uh, thank you for joining us today for our session, What's Next on Advanced Storage? My name is Akanj Basavaraju, and I am a product manager here at Microsoft, and I drive various projects related to NVMe storage for Windows Server and on-prem solutions. I am joined today by my awesome colleague, Rob Hinman, and together we're going to walk you through some really exciting things that are coming up to Windows Server. So here's what we have on the cards for this session. I will kick us off with an overview of our efforts on modernizing NVMe storage for Windows Server 2025. And then I'll hand it off to Rob to bring us home with an overview of the exciting developments around the Storage Spaces Direct campus cluster. So without further ado, let's get started. Over the past decade, we've witnessed the rapid rise of NVMe technology in the storage world. It is an evolving storage standard designed to unlock the full potential of flash memory and next generation storage media. Today's workloads, especially in the fields like AI, big data, and real-time trading, require storage solutions that can handle massive performance demands. Therefore, our goal is to modernize the Windows storage stack in order to be able to deliver better performance and also address the growing needs of our customers. And NVMe storage is key to meeting these demands from our customers. Reputable sources like Gartner and IDC also recognize that the future of enterprise storage will be NVMe-based solutions. It is not only highly efficient, but it also delivers extraordinary performance and scales effortlessly, which is essential for high-performance computing, uh, cloud services, and other real-time analytics. In addition, hardware advancements have enabled NVMe SSDs to reach incredible levels of performance. Today, leading IHVs offer enterprise SSDs capable of reaching up to 3.4 million IOPS in terms of RAND read. And just comparing this to previous PCI generations, the SSDs then were capable of up to 1.1 million IOPS in Gen 3 and up to 1.5 million IOPS in Gen 4. So as you can see, there's significant growth in the hardware capabilities of NVMe SSDs as we go through these generations. And as Microsoft, from an OS perspective, we want customers to be able to leverage these levels of performance that the hardware is capable of delivering. And so we aim to optimize our storage stack for these NVMe SSDs. Now let's talk a little bit more about those stack optimizations I just mentioned. Last year, we launched Windows Server 2025. This became available around November of last year, and it included some optimizations that delivered improved performance on NVMe devices. But we didn't stop with that. We had more work to do. We continued to optimize the storage stack by incorporating a multi-queue architecture within the current storage stack model itself. This enables high levels of parallelization and efficiency for NVMe IOs and allows Windows Server to reach the hardware performance limits of these modern SSDs that I mentioned. So here on this slide, you will see a clear representation of the continued improvement, significantly higher IOPS, as well as reduced CPU usage per I.O. when we compare it to Windows Server 2022. Now, I'll talk about these numbers in a little bit more depth soon, but I first want to give you a walkthrough of the changes that we've made to the stack. Here is a high-level hierarchy diagram of the various components uh, within our storage stack. So essentially, the I.O. path flows through these components. If you look at the user mode layer. It starts with the apps sending and receiving IOs through APIs such as Win32 APIs. At the upper file um, storage stack levels, we have the file system level, which includes the file system manager, the uh, filter manager that manages the mini port filters, etc. The next level is the volume level, which has the volume manager, and it makes its way down to the lower storage stack levels with the disk level and adapter level interfacing with the storage hardware itself. The changes that we introduce as part of this effort are all within the lower storage stack at the disk and adapter level that I mentioned. This means that the upper storage stack layers remain unchanged, and so this does not have any impact on the existing file system or volume configurations that you may have. Now, zooming in on these changes at the lower uh, storage stack level, 
The diagram on the right represents what we have currently in terms of the stack components, and the blue sections here represent elements um, which have changes made to them. And I'll walk through these one through four. Starting with number one, NVMe disk is a new lightweight driver that we're introducing as part of these optimizations that will take effect in place of disk.sys. It maps the NVMe commands between the higher stack layers of the storage stack and the store port layer below. Number two is the existing store port driver. Um, we leverage the existing store port driver and introduce an alternative path specifically for NVMe with multi-queue capabilities that support all the workflows per the NVMe set of specifications. So this also supports both standard queuing and direct queuing models with the NVM subsystems. Now moving on to three and four, these represent the mini port drivers that connect the store port layer to the hardware. For PCIe NVMe devices, the driver will continue to be the store NVMe driver and plugs into the optimized path um, as part of the stack that's shown in blue here. Number four represents third-party mini port drivers that interface with their own storage HBAs. This enables third-party vendors to adapt their mini port drivers to leverage the new multi-queue architecture that we introduce and take advantage of the better performance that we get with this stack. So now that we've had an overview of the changes that's coming as part of the stack, let's take a look at what these changes translate to in terms of performance with a quick demo. Um, I've remoted into two identical machines, one running Windows Server 2022 on the left, and the other running the latest changes on top of Windows Server 2025 on the right. So for this test, we'll be running a disk speed measurement of 4K RAND reads and visualizing the output through the performance monitor application. Both these machines have four high-performance Gen 5 NVMe SSDs, that are capable of reaching up to 3.4 million IOPS of RAND read. So with that, we can get started with the demo. We'll first go into our machine with Windows Server 2022, kick off the disk speed test on the first machine, do the same on the second machine as well. And as the tests start to run, we'll start to see the IOs ramp up on both these machines, starting on the left, since we started it sooner, and then on the right as well. Now we'll get into the actual numbers behind this in a slide's time, but what I want you to focus on is that even visually you can see that the IOPS chart on the right is significantly higher than the IOPS measured on the left uh, compared to Windows Server 2022. So now let's look closely at the outputs and see how they compare. In this slide you see a representation of the data collected for the 4K brand read disk speed tests with 8 threads. The chart represents three particular test cases. The gray bar represents um, data collected as part of Windows Server 2022 test case. The blue is Windows Server 2025 that was launched last year. And the orange corresponds to the latest changes that we have introduced as part of these optimizations on top of Windows Server 2025. The chart on the left shows the total IOPS that was recorded as part of the disk speed test. And the chart on the right shows the percentage CPU saving per IO. And this uses the Windows Server 2022 measurements as the baseline to show how much better the stack optimizations have gotten. Now, key observations. We see the continuous improvement in total IOPS delivered with the latest changes, and we're seeing over 80% increase in the latest changes compared to Windows Server 2022. At the same time, we look at the CPU usage per IO and there's a huge amount of CPU savings that is delivered as well. And this um, CPU savings amasses from the Windows Server 2025 that we released onto the latest changes as well. Now, I do wanna mention that this is a synthetic IO test and performance on different workloads and hardware configurations may vary, but I like to think of this as um, a test that shows what the stack is capable of in terms of delivering performance, right? So now with the same configuration, what if they increase the number of threads? Can we extract more performance out of these? And so we did exactly that. And what we saw was really exciting. The IOPS, we see the same pattern of significant improvements. And the most noteworthy thing here is that with the latest changes, we were able to hit the hardware perf limits on all four disks. So aggregated across four disks, 
that are capable of about 3.4 million IOPS, we hit the device maximum of 13.4, while the previous OS cases lag behind. At the same time, in addition to that, we saw a similar trend in the CPU savings as well, which essentially means that the new stack optimizations that we are introducing is able to achieve hardware perf limits in terms of IOPS, pushing a lot more IOs through per second, while using less CPU resources compared to previous versions of Windows Server. And so this is really impressive stuff and we're very excited by this. Now we have a clear picture of what are the changes that we're bringing in, what it's capable of in terms of performance, so now let's take a look at how we bring this to our customers. Here is a high level uh, path to launching this to Windows Server customers. The first important milestone is where we are today, where we are focused on making sure that we have extensive testing of various scenarios and configuration on the new stack to make sure that in addition to the performance improvements, we are delivering quality with this as well. And we will continue to do this all the way to launch. This is going to be an ongoing um, testing effort that will continue. The next major milestone falls in August of this calendar year. And this is when we will enable flighting of these optimizations to server insiders. This is a great opportunity for customers and other enthusiasts to pick up these changes, take it out for a spin on their non-production environments and see the benefits for themselves. Finally, as we approach Ignite of this year, these optimizations will be made available to all Windows Server 2025 customers. And we're really excited for our customers to get their hands on this. So let me walk you through more details around the launch plan of how customers will be enabling this. The optimizations will be delivered to customers as part of an update to Windows Server 2025. The new stack will be enabled by default. So there is no user action that is required explicitly to enable this from their end. The stack changes will be effective on Windows Server SKUs that have NVMe disk surface to it, whether it's a bare metal system or a VM. In essence, as long as the OS sees an NVMe disk attached to it, it will continue to use and leverage the new stack and give you the performance benefits that it also offers. From an OS installation perspective, there's essentially two scenarios. If the system is going through a fresh install or an OS swap, where you may be getting the OS images from volume licensing, there will be a seamless transition to the new stack, wherein all the existing NVMe disks on that system will configure seamlessly to use and leverage the new stack changes that we're introducing. In case of an update to Windows Server 2025, an OS reboot is required for the existing disks on the system to switch over to the optimized path. However, rest assured, after the update has taken place and even prior to the reboot, the disks on the system will continue to use the existing IO path without any regression. There is no concern over the reboot requirement hampering any existing uh, workloads at the time. Post-reboot, all the disks that are on the system will configure to work with the optimized stack. Now I do wanna share a caveat here. If your system is using a third-party mini port driver, it will not be able to leverage the new stack path until the third-party driver is updated by its vendor um, in order to use the new stack component changes that we've made. Um, I mentioned this as part of the architecture diagram that the changes we're making with the existing store port mini port model enables third-party drivers to leverage the stack, but this is essentially coming in as part of the inbox Windows mini port driver. Finally, just a call to action. We would love for you to sign up for Windows Server Insiders and preview these optimizations and features in August. This is a great opportunity for um, our customers and other server enthusiasts to run any toolings or APIs that they have against the newly optimized stack and also run performance and benchmarking tests and also share your feedback with us. You can reach out to us with any questions or feedback um, using the email address that's shown in the slide. It is native NVMe preview at Microsoft.com. So just to summarize from all of the information that was shared, here are the three key takeaways. More storage optimizations are coming to Windows Server 2025 this year, and that makes it exciting. 
This delivers increased performance on the NVMe PCIe devices. And Server Insider Preview is set to start in the month of August this year. Thank you for your time, and I will now hand it over to Rob for the second agenda item. Thanks, Akanj. Really appreciate it. Let's talk about Storage Spaces Direct S2D Campus Cluster with the rack-sensitive four-copy mirror. What we're doing is we're extending Storage Spaces Direct to a two-rack scenario that we call the S2D Campus Cluster for Windows Server 2025. My colleagues over at Azure Local will call this the Rack Aware Cluster. Customers have asked us to improve our resiliency in certain scenarios where they are running two data rooms or they need to be redundant between two buildings inside the same campus. And this is especially important for uh, virtual machines, Hyper-V VMs, when they're collecting data or uh, performing analysis or processing data on the VMs. So there are many situations where this topology is important. Uh, for example, in factories or business parks, office parks, hospitals, college campuses, right, on vessels, cruise ships, stadiums, or really any place where you have two strands of dark fiber. In the implementation, uh, with this improvement, customers can create both a two-copy and or four-copy volumes on their clusters. And so this enables a new level of resiliency, especially when you have a four-node cluster split between two racks or a two-plus-two cluster. This new level of resiliency, we call it rack plus node resiliency. And what it means is it means that you can lose an entire rack and you can lose a node and you still have a writable copy on the surviving node, on the remaining node. This is an improvement in resiliency and many customers will find this uh, appealing. The key point here is you need to define your fault domains in the cluster, then create the storage pool and then create the four copy volume. So we're really excited about this scenario and about offering and supporting this topology. There are a few points here that, that are important. First of all, flat storage is required. In other words, all capacity drives, all flash SSDs or NVMe drives. This builds upon the scenario that Akanj was just describing, where we've improved NVMe drive performance. We recommend a minimum of one millisecond latency between the racks. Um, of course, Customers can create either a two-copy or four-copy volume on this cluster. Uh, we recommend RDMA networking uh, for uh, improved processing speed on this cluster. But this topology is, is nice because it doesn't require storage replica or a layer three switch. Initially, um, when we roll this out, we'll ask customers to recreate the storage pool. So this topology is coming uh, to Windows Server 2025 later this year. We hope that you're interested. All right. Well, that's all from us. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you all.